Hi everyone, welcome to the Ravid Show. We are here at Big Data London and look who I have with me, Clarence from Zoho. Clarence, welcome to the Ravid Show. Long due. I know we've been, you know, talking a lot around data, analytics, uh, the great things Zoho is doing in this space. But before we get into all of those things, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about what do you do at Zoho and uh, how's Big Data London going? <laughs> Thank you, Ravid sir. Thank you for inviting me for this one. It's been for long sure. due, as you said, right? For sure. So it's been a great show. Okay. Um, by the way, I let me introduce myself. Before for I sure. Word. So uh, I I've been with Zoho for more than 25 years. Wow. Uh, I'm the head of the uh, business intelligence product suite. So I've been all in data, BI, analytics for the last uh, 15 to 20 years. So that's what I do. Uh, you've seen. Looks <laughs> like you've seen everything. Uh, what what has evolved in the data and AI space? Right, right. Uh, Twenty five years is long, so that's fantastic. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Big Data London. And I know I've been seeing the Zoho booth uh, filled up with people taking demos and all of those things. But what are you hearing? Uh, from enterprise leaders, right. from the community, uh, what are they most interested in when it comes to data and analytics? Just want to learn a little bit yeah. about that. So we have been participating in the show for the last couple of years, okay. and it's growing year by year. So the interest levels are also growing. Um, there are a couple of things that I have been hearing in the last one day or one and a half days of the show, right? Um, quite a lot of conversation. We're a good, yep. deeper conversation too, right? Yep. So I would like to highlight a couple of things, right? So one is basically people are talking about the ever-increasing data velocity, right? And the variety of data that you try to bring in, right? So bring in data from a variety of sources, it's growing rapidly, what do I do? So that's true, one, right? The second thing is the rapid evolution of technology, AI, right? So typically AI, right? So people want to know how do I adopt AI? Where can I adopt it? Right? How costly is it going to be, right? So that's another thing that is always in the conversation, especially generative AI as well as agentic AI, right? Right. The third is basically the complexity of the analytics needs are also increasing. Not only looking at the historical data, they also look, want to look at predictive, diagnostic, so true. prescriptive. So, so the, true. the variety of analytics that they want to bring in. And the last is empowering everyone inside the organizations to be AA and insights enabled, right? Yep. Because it's not going to be just only the executives who want to look at insights, right? They want everyone inside the organization to be enabled with insights. So what should they do, right? So these are some of the common things that keeps coming in different tones and different models, yeah. right? Yeah, no? I think the, the amount of data and the vast data that we've been kind of seeing is obviously uh, the talk of the town, every right. enterprise leaders want to understand how are we going to fix that. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to learn from you uh, how analytics is addressing that and how are you all gearing up to help those enterprise leaders? Yeah. So actually we have been investing on this platform for the for last 15 years. So we in fact came up with the first version in 2009, right? Yep. It's a long journey, right? And the product has also been evolving with the changing trends, right? So, so there are a couple of things that we have been fundamentally doing in this platform, right? The first is basically build a very high quality data management block because in very anything important. that you build, right? Anything that you build, if you don't have a very strong data foundation, whatever you build over that, it's not going to be good, right? So it's true. going to be on a weak platform, right? So we have built a very strong data management foundation as the first pillar of our BA platform, right? Where you can bring in data, cleanse it, transform it, enrich it, and have it cataloged so that you have high quality data that you can take it up for analysis, right? Yep. So that's the first pillar that you have built. The second pillar is basically the deep analytics capability that we have brought in where people can analyze data yep. in an easy way, not only just use the uh, visual interface, but also bring in AI smartly into that particular thing. Very Deep, important. AI, ML, and the latest generative AI and agentic AI component. Mm -hmm. The whole idea here is not to just bog down the users with the complexity of AI, but make it more practical. Practical, More exactly. embedded, more contextual. Yeah. That's yeah. the way we are looking at that particular. Yep. And then the third part is basically in terms of trying to bring in extensibility to the platform. So it is one thing that we give you pre-builds or pre-packaged things. Yep. But people want to also bring in, bring in their own capabilities inside the platform. So how can I make it extensible? Right? So that's another way by which we are trying to help a different set of audience being enabled with the insights from our platform. So these are things that we are building and these are the core pillars that we have as part of the platform that we offer. I love it uh, and uh, looks like, you know, obviously the one of the most important thing is obviously the practical use cases right. and, uh, you know, the enterprise leaders are always excited about when they can see the real use cases from different industries right, too. Right. And I know Zoho kind of, you know, obviously caters to a lot of different industries. Most of the industries, uh, right. Zoho is not a new name to the <laughs> community. I'm kind of also wanting to learn, uh, what are you doing on the AI side? Uh, 
when it comes and when we talk about think about BI, right, right, right. everything that uh, was BI earlier is still BI, but there's more to more it, to which it, yeah. is AI. Right, right. Uh, can you share a little bit about yeah. that, and then we can get into a few use cases yeah, if you yeah, don't mind. Sure, sure. Actually, if you look at BI as such as a product, right? So it's a kind of a nice uh, uh, slot where you enable organization to bring in all the data that they are collecting into the platform, right? Right. So when there is data, there is always complication, but that's where AI can thrive, right? Without data, AI cannot thrive. So it naturally becomes a great fit to be there inside a BI platform, exactly. right? So that's the first dimension that you have to think of. Mm -hmm. But how do we look at AI bringing bring inside the, AI, the BI platform, right? So there are a couple of things that we try to do. One is what we call as a contextual AI, right? What it really means is we are not trying to go and complicate the users in terms of, I am bringing AI for the sake of AI, no. We will make it very contextual so that the platform is empowered by the capability of very power important. of AI, right? Yep. So, for example, capabilities like predictive AI, where you can do forecasting, right? Trend analysis, clustering, or even anomaly detection. These are contextual AI capabilities that we write, blend inside the platform right there. That's one thing, right? Mm -hmm. The second thing is basically in terms of automated insights, where if you're looking at a report, you want to know what are the top insights that the report is trying to convey to you. 100%. Right? Or you want to know why something is happening, what they call as diagnostic or root cause analysis. And you also want to know what type of recommendation that it can make for you to really take up actions, right? So this is another way of trying to use AI, or generative AI at the back end, to generate insights automatically, not only talk about what has happened, but also talk about why something is happening and what should you do in the future to really address the problem. That's yep. the second dimension. The third dimension is very basically enabling users to have a very natural conversational interaction with the data, right? Exactly. That's what you see in ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a conversational interface, but generating quite a lot of insights, right? So we are trying to bring in generative AI capability where people can have conversations to get insights rather than looking at a dashboard or a report but it can be a natural conversion then. And the last dimension is basically the agentic AI, which is the most hard thing now, right? Yeah. So how can I automate a workflows, right? Yeah. Right from data to insights and action. Can I automate the entire workflows mm -hmm. easily? That's the other dimension that we are trying to bring into the platform. So that I love it, I love it. And you know, to be honest, this is like the first time I'm kind of, I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders, I talk to a lot of, uh, solution providers as well, but this is like the first time I'm kind of hearing someone, you know, getting into the depth of different capabilities that they're kind of bringing to BI, because that's like one of the most important exactly. things right now for all the enterprise leaders as well, because what happens is they kind of don't have to go to different tools to right. make sure that they're getting those insights, but if there's one place where they can have different capabilities yeah. embedded into it, it's a game changer. Uh, so that's very helpful. Talking about, you know, uh, BI with AI, right. uh, I'm curious to know if you can share also any use cases that you have in mind. I don't want you to name customers, but if you're okay, please do. Actually, um, so interestingly, before I came to this event, right, I was uh, talking to a, a big client in India, right? Okay. So it's basically a kind of a food delivery firm. It's okay. one of the well-known brands in India. Got it. I cannot name them, right? Got it, yeah. So they have been with uh, Zoho for quite some time, right? And they are very deep into Zoho analytics, right? So they analyze quite a lot of data, especially on the inventory, food tracking, uh, managing their delivery partners, all insights delivered through mobile, everything, right? So they had an interesting use case where they say, I want to adopt Gen AI, but the way we want to do it is basically, I want to use the Zoho Analytics backend, right? But I want to give them agents, right? An interaction agent where each of the delivery partner would be in a position to interact with data in their context with their own permissions and get insights dynamically, right? Okay. So they want to build custom agents for different delivery partners and give them enabled in their mobile. Oh, okay. Wow. So that's something that was an interesting use case that we have been working on in right, the last it. few months. Yeah. And it's going to be almost like by this next quarter we are going to roll it out. Right? Oh, it's yeah. all built up based on the data that is there inside Zoho Analytics with the agentic AI capability that we already have and uh, a solution built custom for the particular partner. This right? is game changer yeah, for yeah. sure because uh, what they're trying to do is have individual agents for individual uh, delivery partners, but at the same time giving them insights exactly. uh, about and maybe even recommendations, right? Exactly, so whatever that we give it as part of the platform, delivered contextually as part of the agent that they are building for the particular Love it, partner. this is great. Uh, yeah. Great use case, thanks for sharing that. Uh, kind of also curious to learn uh, from you because you meet a lot of uh, the people like head of data, VPs of data, CDOs. Um, do you have any advice for them when they are kind of thinking about AI, BI, 
uh, otherwise as well to have agentic solutions into their workflow. Right. Uh, any advice that you would have for them, Clarence? Okay. See, one is like it is always um, uh, it, it is always easy to get carried away with the with with the, with, the, with the, what do I say shiny uh, objects, shiny objects right? Yeah. So you have to be practical. That's what I would say. So, so everything true. cannot be fit with one one concept called agentic A or generative A, right? <laughs> so you have to choose the right tools for the right thing. So that is something that you always to be have to be grounded with, right? So true. So given that you are decision maker, you have to really put your thoughts on that, right? Exactly. And the second point is basically BA, as I told you, is a natural place where A is going to play a game, right? So so, but you have to look at what type of AI capability that you want to bring in. Do you want to have a contextual AI capability like a forecasting, which is something that is going to be sufficient for you, or you want something more deeper in terms of agentic where it can automate your workflows deeper, right? So you have to evaluate the use case. That's the second thing. The third thing is look at what is the right technology which will enable you to solve the problem for you specifically, right? So that is the other thing that you have to look at. Yep. The last factor is basically the value for the money that you're investing, right? So start with a small proof of concept, try out whether whatever tools or vendors that are going to really help you to solve that, look at a small POC, see whether it can be solving your needs. If it looks good, then go into a production mode. And the bottom line is, whatever that you try to adopt, right? At the end of it, your users, your um, businesses should be really empowered or should see the bottom line being improved because so of adoption of the technology, right? So, true. so that is very important. So you always evaluate based on the outcomes that you want to see. So go from the back, right? So that's it. I love it. I love what you said about, uh, it's first of all, don't run towards the shiny objects, understand what is the need, uh, what your business definitely needs, right. go for that. Not everything needs agents or agent AI solutions, right? Exactly. Uh, think about it, but do the reverse engineering. Yeah see that and then uh, work towards it. That's fantastic. Um, now, next thing I wanted to you know, quickly discuss was around the short term roadmap or the plan. Um, how do you see the space moving, not only just for Zoe, but in general as well, in the next maybe six to eight months, not yeah. even more than that. See, one thing I clearly see is basically the convergence of data and A platforms, right? Yep. So I see increasingly the AI platforms, either the AI platforms consuming the data platform model or the data platform vendors themselves offering AI capabilities together along with analytics into a single box, right? So because that's a natural convergence. So that is going to be something that you can look forward in the next six to 12 months, point okay. of view. Second thing is basically the agentic thing, right? The agentic um, things trying to automate the entire gamut of what you try to do inside, inside that analytic journey, right? That's going to happen. That's mm. going to happen more and more. And it's not going to be just the off-the-shelf solution, but also more customizable like the way that I talked about, where a vendor is trying to talk about building agents specifically for their partners. Right? Exactly. So that is a uh, thing that is going to come. And the last is basically the, because of adopting AI, right? So you are going to further up the adoption of insights by everyone inside the business. What they call as data democratization, right? That's going to be powered up because of the adoption of new technologies like AI, right? Yeah. Until now, only 20% of the uh, users inside an organization are, AI, uh, are insights enabled. So that is going to move up because of adopting this latest technology. So these are things that definitely I see happening in maybe next year. I love it, I love those time. insights. Can't wait to see how the future kind of folds. But uh, uh, one last question for you yeah. is, uh, if folks want to learn more about what Zoe is doing, yeah. I know there are so many freebies, uh, so many ways that people can actually try the product through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the best place to do so that? So you can go to our website, zoho.com. Okay. Okay. Zoho.com has more than, Zoho has more than 55 applications. And nice. we are, BI is one of the primary applications that we offer. It's called exactly. Zoho Analytics. Go to zoho.com slash analytics. You can sign up directly in our website and oh, create nice. an account. We have a free a free trial that is also available. And always there is also an always free plan. You can always use without paying us at all. So I try out it. the product. You will like it because it's a self-service BA platform, no complications, anyone can try it, <laughs> anyone can analyze data and get insights, right? And with that, you can get started in terms of an analytics journey over Zoho. Yeah? We love it, uh, and we've all, all seen the growth that Zoho has over the years, and uh, you know, how you all have innovated is yeah. A+. plus. So can't wait to see that, but uh, I promise one more last question, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that is about uh, if folks want to reach out to you, which yeah. is the best place to connect with you? Yeah, LinkedIn, they, uh, LinkedIn, 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 you can reach me at Clarence Rosario, it's a single word, okay. Clarence Rosario. So yeah, I'll make sure my... to tag you so they can, you know, yeah, just sure. uh, connect with you on LinkedIn. But such a pleasure chatting with yeah, you, Clarence. Uh, got some great insights around BI, got about 
great insights about obviously AI, how agent, agentic solutions, you shared some amazing uh, advice for the leaders out there, but also what you're hearing from industry leaders. It was great to hear and great to understand the theme. Thank you so much, Ravi. It's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. So looking forward to more discussions. Yeah. Can't wait. Thank you, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, clients. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, everyone, for joining us.